Okay, in this chapter, we've been talking about different ways to solve quadratic equations. And so what we want to do in this video is go through all the different methods and talk about which one is best <coughs> and when to use each one. Okay, so these are the methods we've talked about. Factoring, using square roots, graphing, completing the square, and using the quadratic formula. And we're going to talk about each one of those. So the question is, how do I know which one to use? You want to choose the one that's most efficient for the way the problem is set up. So what we're going to do is talk about the different ways problems can be set up and how that kind of guides you into what method you should use. So let's start with factoring and when to use factoring to solve. The first thing you want to know about when to use factoring to solve is you want A to equal 1. We need to have it in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, and you, you need for a to be 1. We can factor if a isn't 1, but we have to use the rooftop method, and that's just a little more time consuming. So let's look at a couple of examples. Here's one. We have x squared plus 5x minus 24 equals 0. So we look at it. It is in standard form, and a is 1. We look right here, a is 1. And so when a is 1, we just need the factors of negative 24 that add to give us positive 5. So you'll just come out to the side, it's negative 24. So you know one of the numbers needs to be negative. And you look for the ones that add to give you 5. This pair right here adds to give us positive 5. And so that's what we're going to factor. x plus 8 times x minus 3 equals 0. And then we just say what value of x makes each one of those binomials 0. So we get x is negative 8 for this one and positive 3 for this one. So those are our two solutions, negative 8 and positive 3. If the factoring isn't easy, you don't want to use factoring. Choose a different method. So the next one we want to use factoring is when you have something like ax squared minus c equals 0. Notice on this one we don't have the bx, and a and c must be perfect squares. The other thing we must have is subtraction there. This is what we sometimes refer to as DOPS which stands for difference of perfect squares. Difference means subtraction, so the problem has to be subtraction. A and C have to be perfect squares. So, for example, 4x squared minus 25 equals 0. 4x squared is a perfect square. 25 is a perfect square, and it's subtraction. So we look for the square root of each term. The square root of 4x squared is 2x. The square root of 25 is 5, so we factor it into 2x minus 5 times 2x plus 5. Once we factored it, we want to set each one of those pieces equal to 0, because it's not quite as easy as up here we could just see what I can plug in for x that makes that equal 0. With 2x minus 5, it's a little harder, so I can set up the equation 2x minus 5 needs to equal 0. And 2x plus 5 needs to equal 0. So we've got both of those equal to 0. And then we solve them, just like a linear equation. So for this first one, you would add the 5 to both sides and then divide by 2. For this one, you would subtract 5 from both sides and then divide by 2. And there's your two solutions. I did leave off one other method where you might, or one other situation where you might want to do factoring, which is if you only have an ax squared and a bx, and we saw quite a few like that, things that looked maybe like um, 4x squared minus 8x equals 0, and you notice that you don't have that constant term. On these, you just want to look for a greatest common factor. So 4x squared and 8x have a 4x in common, so we could factor out or divide out the 4x, and that would leave us with x minus 2 equals 0. And so we can plug in a 0 here, 4 times 0 would give us 
zero. So x could be zero. And we can plug in a two here because two minus two equals zero. So that's our, that's our last situation. So the next method we learned was the square root method. And we want to talk about when to use the square root method. And this is specifically when your equation is in vertex form. So vertex form is a parentheses x minus h squared plus k equals zero. Those parentheses are kind of the hallmark telling you that it's, this is vertex form. So there are a few situations where, you know, it can be in vertex form. If h is zero, it doesn't have those parentheses. Because if you're doing x minus zero, you wouldn't need the parentheses, okay? I put the big plus minus sign here because when we're using the square root, remember that when you take the square root of both sides of the equation, when you write that square root sign yourself, you need to put a plus or minus sign in front of it. So that's the big thing you need to watch out for on this one. Okay, so a couple of examples. The first one, you'll notice we it's kind of in that ax squared minus c equals zero format. But are a and c perfect squares? No, a is 2 and c is 48. Mm -hmm. So since they're not perfect squares, we wouldn't use the method, the factoring method that we did earlier. So the square root method means you isolate the squared term. So we want to get the x squared by, its, by itself first. Remember to get rid of what's added or subtracted first, and then get rid of the multiplication. So we would add 48 to both sides. And then once we've added 48 to both sides, we're ready to divide by 2. We don't want to take the square root until that x squared has a coefficient of 1. So we get rid of everything. Even if it's a negative 1, you would want to get rid of that negative before you took the square root. So once we get down to here, we say x squared equals 24, and we're going to take the square root of both sides, and we're going to remember to put that plus or minus sign at the end or in front of our square root. So you see we have x equals plus or minus the square root of 24. Now, sometimes you're going to simplify the square root, and sometimes you're going to plug it into your calculator and get a decimal. It just kind of depends. 24, the perfect square that goes into 24, the biggest one is 4. So we would say that that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. So it simplifies into 2 times the square root of 6. So x is equal to plus or minus 2 times the square root of 6. Okay, our next example just has a few more numbers in it. And this time you notice we have the parentheses. So we have 3 times x minus 5 squared plus 6 equals 15. On these, we still want to isolate the squared term. So what's being squared this time is the x minus 5. So when I'm trying to isolate, I'm trying to isolate this whole thing, which means I need to get rid of the 6, and I need to get rid of the 3. So I'm going to start out by subtracting 6 from both sides which would give me 3 times x minus 5 squared equals 9. So I subtracted the 6. Now I'm ready to divide by 3 on both sides. So that gives me x minus 5 squared equals 3. At this point, it's really tempting for some reason to try to multiply out the x minus 5. But it's so much easier if we don't do that. So we want to go ahead from here. Once that x minus 5 squared is isolated, and take the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of both sides, remember to put that plus or minus in front of your 3. And see the whole parentheses are gone, because the square root of x minus 5 squared is just x minus 5. The squared gets taken away in one step. So we have x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. We're still trying to find five, or x, so we add 5 to both sides. And when we add 5 to both sides, we get two separate answers. So we're going to add 5 to positive the square root of 3, and we're going to add 5 to negative the square root of 3. So we get 5 plus the square root of 3 and 5 minus the square root of 3. And those are our two solutions for that one. We could plug it into our calculator and get decimals if we, if we want. 